start with Wombat. Senator Rhiannon. Uh, thank you, Chair. I understand that in 2016, the Southern Hairy Nose Wombat, it, their, their IUCN listing was changed from least concerned to near threatened. Uh, now, I, I understand that um, it is legal to kill wombats by um, bulldozing their burrows. So I was interested in considering the IUC end listing. Are you map monitoring the status of wombats, um, particularly in the South Australian area? Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, Jeff Richardson, Assistant Secretary, Protected Species and Communities Branch. Um, I might have missed the start of your question, Senator, so perhaps... Well, I just understood that the um, current listing, IUCN listing for um, Southern Hairy Nose Wombats in mm -hmm. 2016 was changed from least concerned to near threatened. Right. Um, so it, it, one that sort of partly prompted me to um, ask the question because it would seem as though the IUCN sees that there um, could be a potential problem here. Um, in South Australia, I understand that it's legal for their uh, warrens or their burrows to be bulldozed as a method of controlling, killing the animals. So interested in what work you're doing in this area and how you see the current status of the animal. So, Senator, the current status of the animal hasn't been reassessed under federal, uh, under the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act. So there since are... When? Since when? Uh, since, I'm not aware that it's ever been, but I'm, I can correct that on notice if I need to. Um, so the two species, there's a, there's a Bass Strait Islands subspecies of the, of the common wombat, which is listed as vulnerable. Um, and then, of course, there's a the northern hairy nose wombat, which has been listed as critically endangered for some time and where there's quite a focus. Um, uh, so the, the southern hairy nose wombat, I'm not aware of any, um, any assessment that's been conducted. I don't believe it's under assessment. Um, and and uh, so in terms of the monitoring effort that's going into that species, because it's been uplisted under IUC and they're threatened, I'm not aware of any, any activity from the federal government going on around that. So were you aware that it had that upgrading under the IUC and listing? Uh, so I may have been made aware of it, Senator, at the time that it happened, but um, if so, I can't recall. It doesn't surprise me, I guess. I, the IUCN changes their listing statuses of literally hundreds of species um, every few years. So. But wouldn't that be part of your job, that if um, Australian species, um, their listing is changed, is, is, is being changed, that there's some system within the department that you're alerted to that, so then um, your, the work within our own country with regard to these species can be adjusted accordingly? Accordingly. So, Senator, perhaps I should should say at the outset that, that the role of my branch within the department is to um, call for public nominations for species to be assessed, to prioritise those nominations against a set of criteria, and then to undertake the assessments, provide advice, um, sorry, to assist the Threatened Species Scientific Committee to undertake those assessments and then advise the Minister on changes to the list of threatened species. Um, there are, as you'd be aware, more than 1,800 species that are listed. There's some 100 or so that are currently under assessment, which are under assessment for listing as vulnerable, endangered or critically endangered. Under the Environment Protection and Conservation Act, near threatened is not a category of, of threat. Um, so we, we tend to focus our efforts, if you like, on those species which are coming through the system that are, are um, potentially threatened, listed as threatened. So what's the difference between potentially threatened and near threatened? When I say potentially threatened, I mean things that have been nominated for listing as endangered, critically endangered. So until the assessment's completed, they're not threatened species. Once the assessment is completed and the TSSC, the Threatened Species Scientific Committee, provides that recommendation to the minister, the minister makes a decision to add those species to the list of threatened species. They're then threatened rather than potentially threatened. So, so I... I um so my, sorry, Senator, just to finish that answer. So my understanding of the IUCN criteria includes um, a couple of categories under their listing categories that we don't have under the PPC Act. One of those is near threatened, yeah. which is species for which there's evidence to show that it is in decline or has declined over a period of time, but it is not yet eligible under the IUCN criteria. It's not seemed to be eligible for the lowest listing of threat, which is vulnerable. So how does the IUCN listing intersect with your work? Because I think in that answer you've just acknowledged that um, near threatened, although it's not a category, it's um, certainly alerting us to that there is a shift in the status of this animal. So it would seem it would have significance, but could you first off just explain how an IUCN listing intersects with the work that you're undertaking? Thanks, Senator. So. Um 
uh, under the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act and increasingly across all the states and territories that also put state lists of threatened species together, we've essentially adopted the threat categories under the IUCN. So I mentioned vulnerable, endangered and critically endangered. Above that, there's also extinct in the wild and extinct. Um, all of those categories are categories within the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act and increasingly across the states and territories. Um, what we haven't done is replicate the near threatened category or the, the legislation doesn't include the near threatened category. It also doesn't include a data deficient category, which again is a, a category that the IUCN uses in some cases. Right, so it doesn't actually trigger any thinking within regard to your work? So it can. Um, so, uh, so the IUCN um, red list includes species um, that are listed under IUCN as vulnerable, endangered or critically endangered. That can trigger public nominations or um, assessments under the EPBC Act for listing those species in those categories. Um, but it's not a routine, it's not, a, it's not an automatic thing. Right. Okay, so coming back to the southern hairy nose wombat, is there any work, research work, any monitoring, anything that's been done um, with regard to this species? Uh, so not that I'm aware of, Senator, I'd have to take that on notice. Yeah. Okay, if you can take it on notice. Um, so when I saw this um, quote from um, these Professor Leslie Hughes from the Department of Biological Sciences at Macquarie University, who was asked to comment on the extinction crisis that's been with this country for a long time, considering of all the na nations in the world, I understand, and I read this often, that we have the highest rate of um, extinction of mammal, land-based mammal species, which we're obviously referring to marsupials there. And Professor Hughes said recently, I think the whole system is completely broken, um, referring to uh, our management of our native um, mammal species. When, when um, comments like that are made by leading experts in the field, is that something that, again, um, you, you consider in terms of you know, just the research that's going on and the implications for government work? Like, to my mind, and it's a long, long time since I've worked in this area. It just seems to be enormous comment that would hopefully trigger governments to think, well, what, what's going on? Do we need to reassess how we're managing our environment work? So I think, Senator, that there is, you know, uh, obviously governments work on threatened species and, and potentially threatened species, species that haven't yet been listed, and on their recovery through a variety of different programs and parts of the department. So. If you like, I won't answer for other parts of the department, but my responsibility is around ensuring that the list of threatened species is as up-to-date, current, comprehensive as possible. Um, that's the role that I fulfil. There are certainly work closely with other parts of the agency that conduct research and invest in research, um, and, and there are priorities set around that research um, under conservation devices and recovery plans that my area prepares. Um, similarly, um, the material that's, that's prepared at the time of listing of a species feeds into investment programs, so investing in recovery, in, in habitat restoration, in threat mitigation, etc. So, so I think there's an overall, if you like, approach. And that's, again, I'd just, just add one last point, sorry, Senator, that, that that's, that's the federal government. There is a lot of effort, time, resources um, devoted by state governments, by local governments, and by community groups in this. And that's all part of the response, if you like, to threatened species. So I was really not trying to put you on the spot, Mr Richardson, but it was a specific question about this comment from a leading expert. Mm. Is there anybody else who can actually say within the department, when you have experts so, Senator, making such enormous statements? So apologies, Senator. Senator, if I understand your question, is um, if we are become aware of a, an assessment by an expert in some field, uh, do we actually take it into account and does it inform our thinking? Well, yes. Okay, so have you taken into account, were you aware of what Professor Hughes has said, a leading expert um, in the status of Australian unique wildlife? Were you aware and have you taken it into account? And if you did, what's, hap what's happening? Senator Kylie Johnson, uh, First Assistant Secretary of the Biodiversity Conservation Division. Senator, uh, as, as the Secretary and Mr Richardson have said, yes, yes, we were aware of the comments that were made. Um, and yes, we are often approached by leading experts right across a range of areas um, that we deal with. And we always take 
um, take into account or, or at least take, <coughs> consider the information that is provided by those experts. Um, as Mr Richardson has identified, we also have our Threatened Species Scientific Committee, which we um, go to for a range of advice around threatened species. And when they do their consideration for threatened species and listings under the EPBC Act and advice to the minister, they also consider expert advice from a range of scientists across across various fields. Okay, thanks for the response. Could you take it on notice, because you've said you were aware of Professor Hughes's comments, um, what response that you've made um, or any work that um, those comments have initiated? Could you take that on notice, please? Uh, we have not initiated any work directly in response to Mr Hughes's comments. Okay. Uh, Senator, I think what I said is we are aware of his comments. Okay. And we do, of course, consider a range of advice from a range of experts as they raise those with us. Thanks very much. Um, I just want to move on to platypus just to ask some questions about platypus in Australia and platypus diplomacy. Uh, now, what I understand is that the um, for under the IUCN red listing, um, a platypus um, is still uh, considered to be of least concern. That's their category. Um, and it's not listed, platypus are not listed on any threatened species scheduled in Australia except in South Australia. That's what I understand. If that's wrong, please let me know because the questions are relevant to that. So first off, with regard to um, South Australia, what work is being done to protect platypus and their habitat in South Australia, considering they have a different listing? Uh, Senator, that's really a matter for the South Australian government. So, so you, your work doesn't intersect with that at all? They're not nationally listed, Senator, right. so it's a okay. South Australian issue. Um, how, um, with, um, with regard to the Murray-Darling Basin Plan, is there and the impact, um, that the, all the changes with Murray-Darling Basin um, can have on platypus habitat? Is that another area that might intersect with your work? I'm just trying to understand where no, you Senator, would... again, I, it would be a matter for the South Australian Government about what, what yeah. actions... So, well, maybe... Or on that one, the, uh, the Commonwealth Environmental Water Holder may well take into account when contemplating certain environmental watering events, um, impacts that uh, that may assist in terms of platypus breeding or or the like. Uh, uh, the water holder, I think, appears with other aspects of the water portfolio at an integrated hearing on Friday. That's right. So there is this um, platypus conservation initiative. That's not something that comes under any of you. Um, no. Well. It's a broad-ranging title. I don't. I don't think. I know. As well, it's a, no. No. When I say it's actually their capitals, it is actually a program um, that comes out that Taronga Zoo has something to do with, etc. And I come across it in different areas. So I'm literally just trying to understand. But I'm gathering that it. That's well, not an issue. Okay. Of Senator, you may wish to ask a question on notice, and then we can try and provide whatever inf information. Okay. If, we if may you have. can give a little bit more information, it, it, okay. it may I'll be supported by federally funded research or uh, or the like. Okay. I'll come back to that. One. Um, thanks. Um, have you put in any resources into, de into determining whether the platypus should be listen, list, listed as threatened under the EPBC list? Uh, so, Senator, it's not currently under assessment. I'm, I don't have information with me at the moment. I believe it may have been assessed sometime in the past and found not to be eligible. Um, I'll correct that on notice if that's not the case. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so moving on to some of the um, platypus diplomacy issues, we've touched on some of these in the past. So I just wanted to ask you some <coughs> questions following on the responses that you gave to my questions previously. This is question number 40 that you, um, with a date of the 3rd of November 2017. Um, So I was asking about um, uh, Australian wildlife exported to overseas zoos, and your answer said, the an the and specifically about platypus, the, answer, the department is not actively, and I'm emphasising the word act actively, the department is not actively considering the leasing of native species. If you take out the word actively out of that sentence, are you considering the leasing of native species? No, sir. So you're not considering it in any way? No. Have you previously considered? No. No consideration no. to any export of platypus? No. Okay, so I just wanted to move on to this project, and this is question 
Uh, question number 38, also the same date, 3rd of November 2017. So here you, it's about the program with San Diego Zoo. Uh, and there had been the reports that um, the San Diego Zoo was going to pay half a million dollars to import platypuses for display. Um, and your answer, you say, San Diego Zoo Global is not paying 500,000 to import platypuses. Is it pay, paying any money to do anything else to do with platypus or other wildlife? Uh, yes, it is, Senator. Uh, well, it is not paying anything at the moment. Um, but the uh, arrangement is that they're having a conversation. So there are two separate issues here. The first is that they are talking to Melbourne Zoo about whether they can get access to a platypus, and Mr Murphy can potentially talk a little bit more about that. The second issue, which is separate to that, is that the San Diego Zoo have also identified that they would like to, uh, because they think the platypus is an important species, that they would like to donate some money to support platypus habitat in Australia in the wild. And um, that's a conversation that's ongoing and there's nothing being finalised at this stage. So the first one <coughs> was importing a, zoo, a platypus possibly from Melbourne Zoo? And yes. The, and the second one was putting money into conservation? Correct. OK, if anybody could expand on that, it'd be appreciated. Um, Senator Paul Murphy, Assistant Secretary, Wildlife, Trade and Biosecurity. Um, the department has an application. It's not from Melbourne Zoo, from um, Taronga Zoo. Um, to, to export platypus, and that, that's the application we, we've talked about before. Yes. Um, um, we haven't issued any, any permits for, for platypus export. Um, the conditions uh, of transfer need to be formulated to ensure the welfare needs of the animal are met during transfer, and they also include conditions for receipt of the animal at the destination facility and for the care of the animal. Taronga Zoo are drafting those conditions. Um, they held a work workshop in uh, November last year uh, with platypus experts. Um, some officers from the department attended that workshop uh, and they're uh, drafting those conditions now. And what's the timeline? When do you expect... So they're, they're the conditions, they draft them, they come to you and you approve them? Is that what we're talking about? We'll, we'll, we'll assess uh, the conditions um, against the EPBC Act and... But do you have to approve them or do you just yeah. get a copy? The conditions, we, we'll, we'll um, assess them against, against what we know about the science and the criteria under the EPBC Act and um, we'd adopt, we'd approve those conditions. Um, we have similar sets of conditions, uh, for example, for koalas and, and, and wombats. Uh, and they would have the same sort of status as that, and we'd put those conditions on the on the website. And there is there a timeline when you will receive this from Taronga Zoo, and when you have to approve it by? Um, their application, I guess, um, is outstanding. It does, and it'll remain outstanding until they provide that information, and really the timing's in Taronga's hands. Uh, so I wanted to come back to the issue of what the benefit to the platypus is, uh, platypus, platyp platypi, uh, what we have. Um, but I think, um, Ms. Jonathan, you mentioned Melbourne Zoo, and the answer I just got was about Taronga Zoo. Mm -hmm. so yeah, Senator, I stand corrected. So um, we were Mr. talking Murphy, about yeah, Taronga, yeah, not yeah, about Melbourne. And I'd also like to um, correct just one of the things that I mentioned about San Diego Zoo and expand on that a little bit further for you. Um, so the 500,000 that has been mentioned is a project that was identified under the Threatened Species Prospectus. Um, the Threatened Species Commissioner will be here later today after lunch and, and Ms Box would be happy to provide further information on that for you. But essentially um, it, was a it was a project listed under the prospectus to help us understand and model key threats to the platypus and five threatened fish species in southeastern Australia. Um, its aim is to help ensure the long-term survival of the platypus and San Diego do, Zoo did indeed in early 2017 contribute 500,000 to that project. They're also, um, and this is where Melbourne Zoo comes in, um, currently negotiating a partnership with Melbourne Zoo in relation to that project, which is separate to what Mr Murphy was talking so about. So that's really a correction to answer number 38, uh, what you've just said, because sure. in that one you say San Diego Zoo Global is not paying 500,000. To import platypuses? No, it's not a correction. It's a clarification. They are not paying five hundred thousand to import platypuses. But the funding is not for this to a threatened okay. species prospectus project that okay. was in the prospectus. 
Okay, thanks. So, thank you very much for the clarification. Uh, so, um, we've got a platypus, or more, maybe more than one platypus. Is, well, it's first of all, is it just one? <coughs> one project. Just one we're talking about? Yes. To go to San Diego Zoo? Um, I'm not sure, Senator. I have to take that on notice. Okay, so what's the benefit to the um, conservation of platypus, protection and conservation of platypus, sending it to San Diego Zoo? Well, um, generally the, the Act provides for um, trade of live animals between zoos, um, but it's a bit difficult to comment on this particular application until we've received all the information. I wasn't asking for a comment on the application. I'm actually asking on the benefit. I mean, part of your job, and that's the section we're up to now about um, um, all aspects to do with these unique species that are only found in Australia. So it really isn't about the application. It's about what is the benefit of exporting these animals overseas to the protection and conservation of these animals. Officials may have some specifics, they may need to take some on notice. I mean, obviously there are um, uh, general activities in terms of breeding programs, research programs and otherwise that, uh, that many institutions participate in and uh, San Diego Zoo would be one of the world's leading institutions I think in terms of the types of research and breeding programs they generally undertake. I can't speak specifically for what they might do in relation to platypus. But, uh, so are you officials... suggesting that though I didn't think they already had a platypus? I, I, as I said, and they're Senator, only sending I can't, one. You, you, are, you, are, you asked um, about Senator. They're only sending one, so is, is the it justification right? they, they may have others. I rich. don't know, Senator Rhiannon. Do you? Beeper. They may have others. I well, don't know. I'd need to check. Do you know? Well, I think that I, I'm I'm asking questions so my, myself and others can understand what's going on. It's very serious. Um, the Senator status of some of these animals, and you're giving the justification of possible breeding programs. And we've been told only and, one and is being sent programs, there. And that these are common undertakings in institutions like the San Diego Zoo. Uh, we, I think as you've heard, um, all of the details of this application appear not to have been provided yet. So, uh, however, we can certainly take further questions in that relation on notice. Uh, unless officials have anything in particular to the San Diego Zoo that they but can But Minister, wouldn't add. you see this as a form Senator of platypus Rhiannon. diplomacy, Senator like Rhiannon. we've had panda diplomacy and koala diplomacy, where it's more hey, about, not about the animal, but about the development of the relations between Excuse different me, Senator countries? Rhiannon. Senator Rhiannon, could I just seek an indication from you how much longer you have? You've been going for over 20 minutes and three other senators, including two of your colleagues, have questions of this area, and we are running well over okay, time. Okay, I'll come back to it then. Thank you, Chair. Okay, all right. Senator